very pleased today to have the opportunity to talk to Rick Rogers. Welcome, Rick. Thank you. Rick is the president of Rogers & Associates, with, which is a wealth management firm out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. That's correct. Well, we're going to talk about some pretty interesting uh, things today. Uh, we're going to cover mostly the topic of financial advisors as fiduciaries. So we're going mm -hmm. to go do some of the basics, but uh, there's some fascinating things going on because I would have thought that all financial advisors were fiduciaries just because I think and if we went out on the street or asked our audience, <laughs> isn't your financial advisor your fiduciary, people would say yes. So tell us about the new rule that's actually going to require that and what it means to be a, a fiduciary. Well, fiduciary is a requirement, a legal requirement, to put your client's interest before your own. Okay, let's so, stop right there. Uh, client's uh, interest, interest before <laughs> your own. You would have thought that that was actually what every financial advisor did, but not so? Well, I don't want to uh, to give the impression that uh, that advisors are out there doing something that they shouldn't. The point is that they're not required to be advisors. Oh. And actually, it's the, uh, it's the opposite of what you would expect. The vast majority are not required to be advisors, or, fidu or fiduciaries as you advisors. So if we go back to where all this started, which was in 1933, the Securities Act of 1933, the, that was the requirement for licensing and the advisors at that time, people who probably were known as stockbrokers at, at that moment, uh, they were put under a suitability standard, which essentially requires them to not recommend something that is not unsuitable for their client. So okay. they have a standard of care that says, I need to know about your finances, I need to know about your, um, your tolerance for risk, and I'm not uh, allowed to recommend something that would not be suitable. And that's where probably 70 or 80 percent of advisors operate under the suitability standard. Okay. The Investment Advisors Act of 1940 then regulated registered investment advisors, and they are actually required to be a fiduciary, putting their client's okay. interest, and they must put their client's interest before their own, which includes uh, explaining what any potential conflicts of interest are, anything that uh, how they get compensated, uh, anything that might put them, their interest, or lead a client to think that there's something going on that isn't. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> yes, that makes sense. Okay, um, so w what sorts of questions um, should we ask our financial advisor? Well, I think you, I would start with, are you a fiduciary? Okay. And will you be a fiduciary at all times? Because this has really become blurry. Over the past 10 or 15 years, this has been an issue that those advisors who operate under fiduciary standard under the Re Registered Investment Advisors Act um, say that clients don't know the difference and oh. that they should know the difference. Not that one is necessarily better than the other, but certainly you would want to know if somebody's acting in your own best interest. And what has happened is that you have probably the majority of advisors who are registered representatives working under the suitability standard that also do some of their tasks as a fiduciary. Okay. So depending on the type of account that you have, depending on the type of advice that you're looking for, they could be a fiduciary and then the next point not be a fiduciary. So I would want to know, are you a fiduciary? Are you going to out, uh, put my interest before your own? And are you going to be a fiduciary at all times? Well, how does a financial advisor get that designation as a fiduciary? How, how, how does that happen? Well, you're actually operating under the Registered under. Investment Advisors okay. Act. So you're a registered investment advisor, which means that you're not getting commissions, you're getting paid a fee. Okay. And so you hear the term that's thrown around in the industry today, fee-based. Fee-based means that sometimes I'm a fiduciary and sometimes I'm not. So oh. I can take commissions or I can take fees, and when I'm taking fees, I'm, in, uh, I'm working as a fiduciary. When I'm taking commissions, I'm not. And then fee-only, which are advisors who are never allowed to, or they don't have securities license, so they would always be fiduciaries. So um, you've gone in, you're meeting with somebody new, and mm -hmm. you ask that question, and they say no. Should you, <laughs> should you run? <laughs> well, you shouldn't. I, I wouldn't say that you run. I, I've uh, been in the industry for over 30 years, and I operated as registered representative originally, and we went to a registered investment advisor to be fiduciaries because mm -hmm. I thought that that was the best way to do financial planning. But there are some things that, that need to be sold, and it's, and it's almost impossible to sell things as a fiduciary. If you think about a car salesman, so you go into a Ford dealer, and the, the person that you're working with, they want to find out what you're looking for, what's important to you, what's the requirements, but in the end, they're going to recommend a Ford. 
okay. <laughs> because that's where they work. Exactly. And yes. so we we know as consumers that that that's in their best interest that they're probably going to get something out of the sale, and that's the same thing with the registered representative. We know that they have a divided interest and uh, and to be wary of that. So, what would be the best way to actually find a good financial advisor, wealth manager? There's an organization called the uh, National Association of Personal Financial Advisors, okay. NAPFA, NAPFA, dot org, uh, and they only uh, the members are only or fee only, and so they're fiduciaries all the time. And there's a find an advisor uh, site where you put in your zip code, and it'll list uh, who is close by and what their specialty is. And that would be my first suggestion. Okay. The Financial Planning Association also has a sim similar uh, service, mm -hmm. but the Financial Planning Association represents both sides, and so you just have to read through to see whether they are fee-based, fee-only, or commissioned only. So you're not advocating doing a call out on social media, who should I talk to? Uh -huh. <laughs> do do well, your homework. Well, do your homework, yeah. know what you want, and uh, there's nothing wrong with working with somebody who's not a fiduciary, but you just need to understand that there will be times when they're going to be working for themselves right. or working for their employer and not necessarily having your best interest. So really looking for full disclosure on this is really what's most important. You've got to make well, sure they're telling you the truth about yeah. where they stand. And one of the differences with somebody who is a fiduciary is they have a disclosure form. Um, people might be familiar with the term prospectus. It's not a prospectus, but it has all the disclosures. So for Rogers and Associates, our disclosure form would tell you who the owners are, how long they've been there, what their training has been, what are our services, what are our fees, and it will list any potential conflicts of interest that we've already been able to identify. Oh, that's great. So um, this is a relatively new uh, requirement of the Dep Department of Labor. Right. What kind of impact do you think it's going to have on the industry? To be determined, because, to be determined. It's still, because it's still uh, because it's still working out the details, and okay. I think, um, and and this was uh, put by, forward by the Obama administration, and I think it was trying to address this ongoing struggle that the industry hasn't been able to uh, address on its own. Who's a fiduciary? Who's when are you going to be required to be a fiduciary? So starting with retirement plans, because most of us are aware that there's a retirement deficit. People aren't saving enough. They're not getting enough put away. There's going to be a lot of people that get to age 65, want to retire, and aren't able to financially. Mm -hmm. And one of those potential areas would be in retirement plan advice. So now any retirement account, IRA, Roth IRA, 401k, 403b, whatever it is, whoever is advising you is going to be required to act as a fiduciary. And there's uh, rules that are being set up for when they can do something other than that, and that's kind of what the issue is, how, how those are going to be worked out. Uh, it's supposed to start being implemented sometime over the summer, but I think the deadline is January of oh, 2018. Great. <laughs> well, that lots of changes. People can stay well right. informed. I want to thank you so much for being here. But before we go, I do want to make sure because you brought this up at the end. Mm -hmm. um, don't retire broke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> new book. Um, I think it can be very useful to everybody who's in our audience today. And I want to thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me.